Welcome everyone. I am once again going to take a look at a game posted on reddit.com by a random poster there. Uh, he's rated about 1500. The reason that I'm looking at this game, well, I haven't even seen it much. I've very briefly glanced through it. But the only games I would just randomly decide to look at are games that people post where they draw or lose. I generally don't want to look at a game where somebody won because there's usually not so much to learn from that. I feel like it's much better to analyze your losses. So the only times I will just randomly do that will be if it's a game that you lost. So post your videos or your games on the website on Reddit or chess.com or somewhere. Maybe I'll see it and just randomly make a video about it. So let's see what the heck's going on. Uh, D4, G6. Uh, our, our hero is black in this game. He writes, I think this is a form of the King's Indian. The, you have to be a little careful when you play G6. The first thing you need to ask yourself, what move do you play against E4? If the answer is G6, then you can play it against D4. Uh, the reason is, after D4, G6, they can transpose into an E4 line by playing E4 themselves. So it's just an important question to ask. Um, I don't know the answer to it, because I don't know this poster. But always important to be aware of those transpositions. So bishop g7, bishop, uh, and white plays kind of a more positional approach. e4 or c4 are like somewhat more common when you open with d4. In this game, white is rated 1600, black is 1500. But this is on the chess.com server, so using that rating system. Um, black played knight f6. All these moves are kind of normal. Castles, queen to d2. An important question, what if they go e4 grabbing the center? Usually you don't want to just let your opponent have the center on their own, uncontested. So a typical response would be d5, fighting for the center. If they take, you take with a knight, and typically this is fine for black. Uh, you're attacking the knight, you've, you've taken away some of their center control. And if they go e5, usually you stick your knight on e4, threatening maybe to take and ruin his pawns. And if he takes, you can usually take. They attack your pawn like this, and then you put pressure on their d4 pawn very quickly. So if they take on e4, you take on d4. If they go c3, you can maybe take and go knight c6. This is just some typical ideas. I don't know that they're all working perfectly here. I'm just demonstrating the standard ideas. Uh, White didn't go e4, white went queen d2, and, and the poster wrote, I feel like this happens with the threat of trading off the bishops every time I fee and kettle my king's bishop. Should I worry about this? Not really. Uh, this is not a big threat, bishop to h6. One of the most overrated fears in chess is this fear of bishop h6 trading the bishop. Um, it's just not that big of a deal. It's just a trade. It's not like they get to checkmate us automatically. So usually, see in the game you played rook e8, the idea if bishop h6, bishop h8. This looks a little artificial to me. I would just probably, my first instinct would be to go c5. To kind of like open some lines for this bishop. If he takes it, we can maybe go, I don't know, queen a5, trying to take the pawn back. And if we ever do get this pawn back, we have two central pawns. So that's one idea. Other idea is d6. And just ignore this. Like play, play like it doesn't matter that much. I mean, he takes and we take with the king. And then, you know, because sometimes in a King's Indian type position, we'll end up going like, you know, just, just for an example, we might end up going e5, right? And then at some point, let's just make some randomish moves. I just want to set up this type of position. All right, let's say, like, I'm just trying to set up an example. So let's say something like this happens, where this bishop actually can get blocked sometimes, and it would be great to trade it off in, in situations like this. So, and again, don't think about uh, actual moves there. Like, I know I just made a bunch of random moves, just I wanted to show the structure. So, I, I think rookie eight's a little, a little weird. I mean, it's not so bad, really. I mean, you probably want to do that move anyway, but I would just not worry about this bishop h6. Um, c5, and, and it, it's typically just an overrated fear. And, and just knowing that should help your chest a little bit. So bishop h6 was played, bishop h8 makes sense. Uh, he wrote, if e4, 
Oh, actually, e4 was played. I apologize. And he's sort of not exactly sure how to proceed here, just protecting against e5. So he played d6 to kind of protect against e5. Again, the typical move is d5. It's a little... It's a little it doesn't make the, the rook look very good on e8. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not... I'm not as happy about it now for many reasons. Number one, if c5, there's a move bishop c4 attacking f7. Um, and this is just kind of annoying because when we go e6, there's holes in our position. So like now if we take with the pawn, like the knight comes to d6, slightly annoying. I mean, rook e8 was just not like the best move. So I actually think d5 now is a little risky. d6 is probably appropriate. Castle queen side. A6. He writes, this may be a waste, just keeping his knight and bad bish and bishop off of b5. Um, I don't think it's a waste, but I don't think the point is to keep the knight or the bishop on b5. Um, I see no purpose whatsoever for his knight or his bishop to ever come to the square. The real reason behind this move is to complete our development with a move like b5, bishop b7, knight d7, and then maybe someday we start to attack on the queen side with c5. However, completely irrelevant to keep pieces out of the square. A knight here does nothing, a bishop here does nothing, we just kick it away with c6. So, decent move, but wrong reason. Uh, but b5 is a typical type of move here. Knight c6 is not bad, I just feel like b5 is more consistent with the move a6. g4, and now our, opponent, our, our hero gets creative. He plays the move, knight takes g4, and writes, this is what probably lost me the game. I kind of just wanted to make it interesting. Chess is for fun, right? I plan to get his G and H pawns along with his D pawn for my knight. I mean, to me, chess, the position's already interesting. You don't have to sacrifice a piece to make a chess game interesting. I think B5 is pretty appropriate here. Uh, by the way, I liked it before as well, because now we're actually sort of threatening maybe B4 followed by knight takes E4. So it's nice to make a somewhat developing move with a threat. And you may say it's not a developing move, but the bishop to b7 idea is, is quite reasonable. So, but okay, in the game, knight c6, g4, knight takes g4. Yeah, I think it's like a little risky, although it's creative, he's right. Because uh, the idea is we're attacking the knight, and when he defends it, we take, and we take on d4. I mean, honestly, it's not so bad. Uh, I don't... I don't see anything so horrible about it. It looks like black has reasonable play. So he played bishop to g4 here. And now I think is when white maybe... Black maybe messed up a little bit here. That's the question. What do we do when we're down a pawn, uh, three pawns for a piece? He has a piece, we have three pawns. Usually in the end game, it's better than it is in the middle game. Because pieces are good at attacking. Um, in the game, he played the move h5. The idea of getting the bishop off this diagonal and stopping any plans like where white attacks on h7. However, notice, white is not close to taking on h7. It's not like happening very soon. Although rook h2, rook h1, I guess that is kind of annoying. Like probably that attack comes pretty quickly. And that's the thing, when you give up your pieces, um, you're, you're opening, you give up your piece for a pawn, you are opening yourself up to an attack here. Like, I, just sacrificing something doesn't make it interesting. Like, I think that mode of thinking is a mistake and should be eliminated immediately. Like, saying the move, well, it's interesting, chess is supposed to be fun, chess is supposed to be interesting, etc., etc. That's not a way to play chess. You're, you're, the real reason to play chess is to try to play good moves. Um, and I don't think... I, I don't think it's a bad idea. It's like, it is interesting... But it shouldn't have been played. Uh, you should have just played something normal, like any any kind of move like b5. I mean, white's attack was very slow in that position. Notice what happened, by the way, when we made that sacrifice. And this is important to recognize. White's pawns are in the way. He's going to go h4, h5. Eventually, maybe he'll, he'll get his pawns out of the way and be able to start an attack. What we did is like, hey, your pawns are kind of in the way of your pieces. We're just going to take them off for you. And now all of a sudden, material's even but open lines. We've, we've caused those open lines to occur. So by doing something, in quotation marks, interesting, yeah, we have made it interesting, but for our opponent. 
Um, I just don't, I don't think that type of thought process is a very good way of looking at chess. There has to be a much more logical reason for doing something than interesting. There has to be like, I think my three pawns are better than the piece because of this. In this case, I think the piece is better because we just open up lines against our king. We have to have a reason for doing things. Um, h5, I think white played a very good move here. Just my instinct is as good. Uh, bishop takes pawn. And after pawn takes, rook takes. Now black is the one who's up a pawn, but notice black's king. No pawns in front of it, only a bishop. This position looks very critical. I, I think the attack for white should be extremely hard to deal with. I mean, e5 is played, bishop h6. Now if we take, queen takes, it's going to be an absolute disaster. We're just going to get checkmated on h8. So he played, after bishop h6, he played knight f3. The idea he wrote was to play queen f6 with my knight blocking all the squares he wants to be on, g1 and g5. Interesting. Let's, but see, the thing about that, the knight on d4 is very strong right now. Why not queen here right away? Oh, rook g1. <laughs> or, or maybe bishop takes. It's very scary. Very scary position. I mean, I don't see like a forced win, but maybe this move. I don't know, the queen f4 might save the day. But it's very close to losing. Like, just quick analysis. Rook check. Oh, we just lose the queen, sorry. It's scary. It's very, very scary. Maybe knight f3 was it was a good idea. But again, I think the key mistake this game, for sure, was the sacrifice. It's just totally unnecessary. A and these types of moves, if eliminated, can hugely increase one's uh, ability if you just kind of resist temptation. And, and I think that was what had to happen here. Uh, knight f3, I kind of like the move. Queen f6, oh, but no, this is a problem. Now white is winning. Yeah, he, he played bishop takes, king takes, rook f5, and wins the, wins the knight. So, is there any hope here is the question we need to ask. God, probably not. Probably our just the attack is just way too strong. Oh, I think the best chance is rook e6. We need to somehow find a way to defend laterally, and, and maybe if take... Mm, but this isn't going to work either. Hold on, let me make sure that the automatic recapture is forced. I think so. See, if king f8, we lose our queen, and if rook here, queen h6 looks just so too strong. Knight to d5 somehow. Black's position is falling apart. So I think we're going to end it there. Um, I don't... I don't. The, the rest of the game wasn't that interesting. White just won a piece and then won the game uh, with relative ease. It's just a hopeless position. Uh, it looks like forced mate here. I don't know how he survived that. Um, I mean, I see a way to win. Like, like this wins all the pieces, pretty much. <laughs> rook takes, rook takes rook. But okay, he, he did something slower, but still winning. Um, but basically the game was uh, over at that point. But okay, the key point, the turning point of this game was, number one, definitely taking on g4. I mean, just a move like b5, my opinion, position's fine for black. I mean, maybe I prefer white, probably, but it's like not super clear. You know, it's just an interesting position. I don't like the knight on c6. I did like... I did like b5 immediately with this this kind of setup. Like, let's say he goes here, so if b4, the, the bishop defends the pawn. Bishop b7, attacking the pawn again. So b4 is still a threat. a3, we're never worried about because he's weakened his king. So then we've he's created a hook where if we go b4, we start to open up his king, like c5 and b4. So let's say he defends the pawn, like, like queen e2 or something. And then b4, the knight has to go back to like b1, though. Yeah, I mean, this is just the typical way to play. Just put pressure on the e4 point. Uh, you've given him the center, so you need to like kind of attack it from the wings. And if e5, we go knight to d5. We have some decent play with our knight. 
This would have been a more appropriate plan. Knight c6 is not horrible by any means, though. This is, uh, b5, again, is probably good, although I, I really don't like the knight on c6 here. It doesn't really do anything. Kind of just gets in the way a little bit. But yeah, the main, the main mistake was, was knight takes g4. Because white's trying to attack, and you just open the lines for him. That's the thing. It's not about being interesting, not about being three pawns for a piece. It's what happens after that. What happens after that is white's pieces now have a clear path against your king. So that's all I have to say about this game. I hope you guys enjoyed it, uh, and I look forward to doing this again on Reddit. Thanks, guys, for watching. See you all later. Bye-bye.